Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Roy Chandler. I am a, a director and chairman of Essex Waterways Limited, IWA's, or one of IWA's subsidiary companies. Uh, so this evening, we're looking at the Chelmer and Blackwater navigation and what is next for us. Bearing in mind, we've been running the Chelmer and Blackwater now for uh, 15 years. So the Chelmer and Blackwater, our navigation, it's nearly 14 miles long. It runs from Chelmsford down to Haybridge Basin on the Blackwater Chelmer Estuary, the tidal estuary, and obviously out to sea. We've got uh, 12 locks and a sea lock. Uh, we are a conservation area throughout. All our original locks and bridges are listed structures. We have a towpath for the whole length and uh, a conservation area throughout as well. So I will be looking at um, some, how IWA became involved, uh, how Essex Waterways was formed and its operation, uh, income and expenditure, and some of the maintenance and improvement works we've been doing, and what might be next. IWA has had an interest in the Chelmer and Blackwater for many years. It started while it was still a private waterway and in commercial use, which was something that happened until 1972, when they ceased bringing timber up to Chelmsford from Haybridge Basin. This is an early IWA trip, uh, view taken at Barnes Lock. And the IWA was very keen to promote the navigation because with the um, commercial use ceasing in 1972, it really wanted to see the navigation opened up for public use. Uh, so it held a series of boat rallies, one of the early ones here in 1973, just after commercial use of the navigation had ceased. But what really started it all was the report in 1985 by Chelmsford Branch IWA, which although there had been some public use, we had a, a period when the terminus at Springfield Basin was totally derelict and uh, IWA was therefore promoting restoration of this. The report was very well received, but nothing really happened at that time. The report also proposed a new cut to link the Springfield Basin with the rivers in the town centre, the Chelmer and the Can, to extend navigation to add interest to the town centre. And yes, there were some low bridges, but these could all be dealt with by planning gain. A lot of them were narrow bridges that not only needed to be higher, but they needed to be wider as well. And the proposed new cut was seen as part of the redevelopment of the area of brownfield land, vacant gas works, which had been purchased by the local authority. And at this time, Springfield Basin, as I said, totally derelict, hadn't been used since 1972, surrounded by commercial uses, no public access at all. People in Chelmsford didn't even know it was there. Springfield Lock, which provided access to it, uh, derelict, the listed bridge vandalised and rather dangerous. But by 1992, the branch, Johnson branch, had realised that there was an opportunity to actually bring parties together and to actually get them to put together a project for restoration, a partnership to do the restoration. An important part of that was the National Rivers Authority that agreed to dredge the basin using the council's land for its access, something that hadn't been available previously. And IWA took on the work of restoring Springfield Lock and the feeder stream that fed the water from the river into the basin. And with the help of Waterway Recovery Group and Canal Camp, uh, we got on with a very rapid restoration. We felled oaks with the help of Essex Wildlife Trust, uh, gave them to the navigation company and actually paid the navigation company 
to make their own gates and install them in Springfield Lock. You can see there the bridge in the background has been restored by the County Council Highways Department. And we had the grand reopening in 1993 with the VIPs on the Barge Victoria. Following that, the local authority, the, the planning authority, produced a series of planning briefs to encourage redevelopment around the Springfield Basin. And this gradually took place in phases and opened up the basin to public access for the first time for many years. This is a view of Springfield Basin. And those planning briefs also included the land right down to Springfield Lock, and this development was encouraged which is Lockside Marina, which included a small marina basin in the flats, in between the lots of flats there. And this is a view of the grand opening of that marina basin. IWA support for the Chelman Blackwater continued by fundraising, by organizing lock repairs and paying for them with grant funding, by carrying out works such as these bank repairs at Stonham's Lock, to prevent a failure of the weir, the navigation company having already had two weir failures in recent years. However, by 2003, unfortunately, the original company, which had been established by Act of Parliament in 1793, went into administration. It had been badly managed and they had ventured into other uh, businesses that they knew very little about. And there was a real threat of closure of the navigation. We tried various other bodies, all the local authorities, Environment Agency, even British Waterways, to see if anybody would take the navigation on. There was no other saviour. So as IWA had been campaigning since 1946 to reopen navigations and canals, we couldn't stand by and let this one close. So in 2005, IWA signed a management agreement with the administrator. And whilst the original navigation company still exists in order to keep the Act of Parliament alive, all its powers have been transferred to IWA and Essex Waterways. And the administrator at that time sold off all the assets on the navigation that he thought weren't essential, but had a value elsewhere. So Essex Waterways was formed to take over the management and operation of Chelma Blackwater following the administration of the original company. Essex Waterways is a wholly owned subsidiary company of IWA. It's a volunteer led not for profit company with all monies raised spent on the navigation. We actually saved the navigation from closure and we now operate it for public benefit. We use both a small number of employees and volunteers. I said the administrator had sold the assets that had value, such assets as the tea rooms here at Paper Mill were sold, public house at Haybridge Basin, shops in Chancellor, caravan site at Little Baddo, lock houses along the navigation, development sites, areas of land that he thought had got a value, and even Victoria, the company trip boat was sold. It left us with the bare bones of the navigation and very little adjoining land. However, it did leave us with the moorings and the moorings are our main source of income together with visiting boats at Haybridge Basin, smaller amounts of money coming in from letting the angling, from canoeing, paddle boarding, growing and selling willows, the Hanningfield Agreement with Essex and Suffolk Water, whereby they pay us an annual sum towards maintenance of certain sections of the navigation related to their water supply, and then grants and work by others whenever we can achieve it. And over the last few years, we have been able to purchase the trip boat back and venture into trip boat operation once again to give the public enjoyment of the navigation and increase our income. Other ways of increasing our income have been by installing new moorings. We always have a demand for moorings. Here at Sanford Mill, new moorings below the lock 
we had some of our regular customers complain about the height of the posts on the landing stage uh, but we did explain they were there for a reason although the residents and customers said well we'd like they'd like them cut off but they're there for a reason because we are a river navigation we go into flood regularly and the posts stop the boats riding over the bank we installed new moorings above the lock on the towpath side probably almost tripling the number of boats at Sanford Mill we put new moorings in gradually in Springfield Basin as redevelopment takes place further redevelopment so I said we've repurchased Victoria the trip boat three years ago and up until this year we've been operating her Unfortunately, this year uh, we haven't been able to do so so far. We also purchased a smaller trip boat, Albert, to partner Victoria. And last year we took on Blackwater Dawn, a boat that was already on the navigation, and we use Blackwater Dawn to run ticket trips from Havridge Basin. The smaller boats are all operated by volunteers. We also purchased, repurchased from the owner this little kiosk at Daisy Meadow, Habers Basin to operate the trip boat from. And we refurbished it to provide refreshments and ticket sales for the trip boat. We have entered a joint venture uh, with the owners of this pontoon in Springfield Basin, an asset we didn't own to put four residential moorings on there. This is a way forward of, it, of meeting a demand and also increasing our income. Smaller things like canoe storage, canoe racks here being installed by a waterway recovery group work party, canal camp week this was, uh, where people can store their canoes at a fee. And we still uh, get visitor moorings from Haybridge Basin. This is a busy scene with a lot cram full of visiting club leaving the basin on a busy weekend. Canoes and paddle boards are becoming increasingly popular on the navigation and also provide us with an income fee which helps us operate and maintain. We grow willows which are sold for cricket bats and annual crop which is ongoing replanting every year and felling every year. Our expenditure obviously goes on staff and overheads plant and equipment, maintenance, repairs and improvements. One of our first investments with the help of a loan from IWA was a replacement crane for our boat yard at Haybridge Basin where we hoist out boats for people who want to maintain them uh, on the land. Investing in work boats, this, this was a new work boat purchased with grant funding jointly with Chelmer Canal Trust has proved extremely useful for all sorts of work on the navigation. Weed boats, with grant help, we've purchased two new weed boats. We are, as I said, a river navigation. We get a lot of weed in the summer that has to be cut and lifted. We've refitted the company's old dredger with a new high ab and it's also, since this photo was taken, been repowered with a new engine and drive system. By investing in plant and equipment like this, we we're able to do a lot more work in house with our small staff. Things such as this piling banks where they've eroded, doing spot dredging, lifting our dams into the locks for maintenance work. A very useful bit of equipment that saved us quite a lot of money. And a multi purpose machine for grass cutting, lifting. Uh, etc which is used all along the navigation. Our maintenance work we generally replace at least one set of lock gates every year. Uh, in practice we've been doing more than one set, we've often been doing two or three sets. Um, our lock gates are made from green oak, they all follow the original design of the lock gates because our locks are listed structures. They have a life of about 25 years and we do try to give them an overhaul uh, after about 12 years so that uh, perhaps replacing one set and overhauling the other set are a lot. And while we are doing 
uh, lock gate work, we undertake any lock repairs. We're now getting on top of the lock repairs and most of the lock chambers are in pretty good condition. But you'll see here at Stonham's when we put new lock gates in, we also totally rebuilt this lock wall. And at the same time, we try and create improvements for the users around the lock, such as new landing stages. Here again at Stonham's, where we actually replaced both sets of gates at the same time. We've had some more major projects like uh, a weir rebuild, a failure at Little Baddo, uh, where with the help of IWA's consulting engineer, we were able to do a complete rebuild, all the shuttering design, uh, and building in-house with our own small crew, uh, a, a very competent project that we are very proud of. This is a completed project that we are reinstated and back into operation. We have done several wharf wall repairs at Springfield Basin. All the walls there were in pretty poor condition. Funding them as we can from the developers or planning gain section 106 money as and when we can. We've virtually completed all the work there now, one more section to do. This was quite a major section at Smith's Yard where we found that nearly half of the wall actually had no foundation. It was sitting on the, the just the uh, puddle bed of the, the canal and we had to put a new foundation in before we could rebuild the wall. And we've done quite a lot of bank repairs, hard bank repairs here at Paper Mill where the flood flows have washed away Towpath Bank and the banks around the islands and the old piling have given way. Contractors were used for this work uh, and grant funding was obtained and this is the same bank taken from the other direction just showing a view last summer and showing that we are becoming a very popular waterway for all. Many users just visiting to enjoy the navigation, not necessarily using it for boating. But we do do softer bank repairs. This is above Paper Mill Lock, uh, a bank repair where it had eroded uh, in conjunction with Essex Wildlife Trust and some grant funding. We still have to dredge. Uh, we have an ongoing program of dredging currently working each winter on a section of the Long Pond below Beely down towards Haybridge. Getting more complicated as we go because there are a few areas where we can put dredgings. We try and uh, achieve planning gain where we can. This landing stage at Tesco store at Polbridge uh, was required by the inclusion of a planning condition on their consent whereby they had to provide it before they could open an extension. That's used by our customers visiting the shops. Hull Bridge, again, there was some Section 10 money available to repair, rebuild the bridge. Waterway Recovery Group Canal Camp carrying out the demolition of the bridge. And then the rebuilt, improved structure afterwards. And a major project when uh, shortly after we took over was a chunker replacement. The chunker is, a, on this navigation, a timber culvert running underneath the canal and this one had collapsed and we were losing water from the canal and after many months, probably years of negotiation, the Environment Agency did agree to replace it as part of a flood relief scheme for the neighbouring area. And this is the work underway with the navigation closed. We had a leaky bank at Haybridge Basin which required 10 metre long piles a contractor was brought in to do this work and again we achieved some funding here from Essex and Suffolk Water to carry out the repairs to pile the bank and during as part of that project our own staff and volunteers carried out quayside improvements including putting in shore powers and water services. And Essex and Suffolk Water have been very helpful to us here at Haybridge Sea Lock they carried out brickwork repointing, note the amount of scaffolding required to do that. They repointed the bottom of the lock, provided new top and bottom gates to the original design and replaced the sliding gate with uh, a very high tech new gate system which is uh, at the moment still proving a little bit troublesome but hopefully will settle down and operate successfully before very long. 
Whenever we can, we improve towpaths by surfacing. This is below Beely. Uh, again, we seek funding for this where we can grant funding and help from the Highways Authority, which has been the uh, situation here. And a new towpath bridge uh, a scheme with, uh, in conjunction with Essex Wildlife Trust to put in a new bridge across the stream in the towpath, uh, just above Paper Mill. But sometimes improvements create other problems. This section of the towpath is so popular that it meant we had to carry out other work and uh, bring in another waterway recovery group, Canal Camp, to do more surfacing so people could access the bridge more successfully. We've been gradually improving facilities for users, particularly canoes and paddle boards here at Paper Mill. We've put uh, safety ladders in all the locks, a feature that didn't exist previously. And we've improved facilities for our boaters. New toilets and sluice room here on the north bank of Paper Mill Lock. And new toilets, sluice room uh, and facilities for our caretakers at Sanford Lock. And we've installed pump out facilities at locations along the navigation. A new access bridge onto the island at Paper Mill, serving our offices and access for the trip boat running. And a very recent improvement early this year, the road at Haybridge Basin uh, was becoming a bit of a problem and we have just recently completed resurfacing of that. Again, with some grant aid uh, achieved for us by our head office funding officer. We have volunteers, as I say, we have a series of weekly volunteers who come and help at the various locations. Uh, some have a preference to work at set locations, others are quite happy to work anywhere along the navigation. We have assistance uh, occasionally from our boaters as well, organising work parties here, Sanford boaters collecting rubbish from along the navigation after floods. Chelmer Canal Trust regularly uh, have work parties, particularly dealing with floating pennywort. Invasive species that can become very problematic if not regularly dealt with. And Waterway Recovery Group, of course, uh, Waterway Recovery Group Forestry here, recently working just below Paper Mill on uh, overhanging trees adjoining the navigation. But what next? Well. We have seen over the last year, and particularly this year, an amazing increase in the number of visitors just visiting the navigation for a day out, an afternoon out, a picnic, or a visit to the tea rooms or a walk, especially at Paper Mill, Home Mill, and Haybridge Basin, where there's good road access, but generally all along the navigation. We are in fact really providing a linear country path, a 13 mile, 14 mile country path with connections to other public amenities, other parks alongside us, rail trails, river trails. There's lots of connections into the navigation and people are, more and more people are finding those and actually visiting the navigation. And that has given us a problem, as I've said earlier, we have very little in the way of uh, land with the navigation. This is the visitor parking area at Paper Mill Lock, operated by the tea rooms in the summer, oversubscribed as uh, you can see here. Uh, but uh, that is uh, an adjoining landowner's land, uh, providing an essential um, element for the navigation. But we still have a parking problem throughout the year here, even in January, in the winter months, roadside parking at uh, Paper Mill all around the bends on the navigation, next to the navigation, uh, upsetting the parish councils to the extent that we're now seeing double yellow lines installed at places like Ho Mill, and we will probably get them here at Paper Mill before long. So there are problems here that are building up because of the popularity of the navigation that we're going to have to find ways of working with local authorities and adjoining landowners to try and solve. 
But what, what next? Uh, this is a pump out uh, recently installed this over the winter at Haybridge Basin. We will continue with such improvements, we will continue with maintenance, but we still need to look at increasing our moorings and our income. We have a constant demand for moorings, we seem to have a waiting list for people wanting to bring boats onto the navigation. So we are having to look now at joint ventures with adjoining landowners here at Chelmer Waterside in Chelmsford. We have a planning permission for 10 residential moorings alongside this future public open space that's being developed at the moment. We hope that will progress. It meets the demand that we have for residential moorings, particularly in Chelmsford city centre. And again, it will be a useful income source to us. But we do need more offline moorings. We don't have suitable sites for more linear moorings on the navigation and we think these would spoil the rural character of the navigation as well. But there are opportunities like Sanford Mill owned by the local authority close to Chelmsford. There are redundant reservoirs here right alongside the navigation that would be ideal for uh, a new marina to serve the navigation, the reservoirs are, are almost, well, they're ideal for them. There's also plans for a new country park adjoining this, so there will be improved public access. And it could be a site where, hopefully working with the local authority, we may be able to meet some of those demands that we have for parking, uh, visitor centre, uh, moorings, etc. And we haven't given up on that new canal link, the, the new cut as it was called, it now tends to be referred to as the Canal and River Link in Chelmsford, linking Springfield Basin with the city rivers. We're working with other groups and uh, the local authority now, change of administration there, uh, is enthusiastic about it. The record office on the left of the slide was built to overlook the cut and uh, we are hoping that uh, we will still get a link. At the moment, the local authority would prefer to see a new lock built at the automatic weir, which is the structure that prevents navigation onto the rivers in the city. They, they much prefer that to a new cut, and uh, that would obviously better, be better than no link at all, but we would still prefer a cut if it is possible, or at least the route is protected. So we are hoping we will see boats in the future venturing right in to the heart of Chelmsford. Thank you for your interest. I'll now hand back to Paul for any questions. Roy, thank you very, very much. Uh, what a great uh, selection of, of slides. Um, I had the privilege of uh, being done to the navigation earlier this year and uh, it was great just to see a, a small part of it but yeah you've really taken us on a, on a great great tour. Now we've got some questions um, and I would encourage anyone who's been listening to the presentation who've got any thoughts any questions uh, anything you'd like to know more about to uh, open up that uh, Q&A window and uh, submit those questions through. So I'm just going to uh, deal with uh, one of the one of the questions that's come th come through is that uh, in places as you well showed on the uh, in your your slides tonight, the towpath can deteriorate uh, quite quite badly. And um, is that are you entirely uh, dependent on your own funds, IWA funds, to make those sort of uh, repairs or do you get help from the likes of the local authority uh, to, to be able to uh, improve that which is after all probably what is easily defended as a civic amenity. We, we uh, have been fortunate so far in achieving funding and we've tended to upgrade Topaz as and when we can get funding or um, help in kind such as materials provided by the local authority. Essex Highways have been very good to us in that respect uh, and they have carried out some surfacing themselves at the Haybridge end. Uh, it would be nice to do more but I think our priority has to go to 
first of all, maintenance of the actual navigation for, for the boaters who are paying to use it and providing them with facilities. But uh, as I say, you know, we would like to continue to improve the very well used sections as and when we can achieve some funding towards it. Yeah. And, and I suppose the, the, the canal camps to do the work as well. Yes, well, that's been an unfortunate uh, consequence this year that the uh, the work camps have uh, all have to, uh, had to be uh, cancelled for the summer and uh, maybe some later in the autumn, but who knows, who knows? It's uh, been a, a challenging year. Um, so uh, one of the questions uh, that I had was, um, again, you, the navigation had quite a bit of flooding earlier in the season. It seems ridiculous now that we've had all this incredibly dry period for the last couple of months. But uh, I guess back in, was it January, February, yeah. uh, we saw pictures of paper mill in a fairly uh, difficult situation. Um, has there been any lasting consequence of that? Uh, this, this year, I mean, yes, we did have extreme conditions. We had several uh, periods when we couldn't actually access paper mill or home mill. Uh, you know, our, our sites were totally inaccessible. Uh, the main um, problem with that is that it does prevent us from doing our maintenance work because the winter period is a busy period for, for doing lock works uh, and, and the major work, you know, when we haven't got the boaters wanting to use the facilities. But as far as damage went this year, uh, not a lot, quite a lot of litter washing down that has to be collected up. And uh, I think at Paper Mill, quite a few of our materials uh, were rolling around and ending up in different places. Yeah, so um, you you mentioned the the trip boats, uh, Victoria. Who's who operates that? Because you, you were saying that uh, some of the smaller trip boats are operated by volunteers. We've got a question saying, who who operates Victoria? We we operate Victoria. We we have uh, a um, boat uh, manager we have taken on as a skipper for Victoria, who actually organises the crewing of that. Generally, a paid crew on Victoria. Uh, using part-time employees um, with the smaller trip boats, as I say, he will organise it. But uh, we have a rotor of volunteers uh, who will come and operate those, and we've been gradually building that up uh, so that uh, you know we've got a very reliable source, but some very useful volunteers, and uh, they do enjoy actually taking people out and talking to them and giving them trips. I think it's quite a pleasant thing to do. Of course, that's one of the things that uh, uh, has been very severely hit and is actually likely to be quite severely hit for, for quite some time uh, due, to, due to COVID. Um, have you been able to keep volunteers uh, doing other activities? And I guess more recently, there's probably slightly less pleasant jobs to be done, uh, maybe clearing up litter from... Uh, the vast hordes that I understand have been visiting the navigation. Yeah. Yes, I mean, our um, tripbo volunteers generally are, are not working at the moment, but um, several of the other uh, regular volunteers are now venturing back. But of course, a lot of our volunteers are fairly elderly, like myself, and uh, therefore they've been in lockdown. So we haven't had the number of volunteers this year that we had. Uh, obviously, we haven't been able to operate trip boats. Doubtful whether we will this year, unfortunately. But we are or have reopened the kiosk at Haybridge today uh, yeah. to provide a takeaway service. So we're trying to get back some normality and uh, some services for the public, who, after all, there's a lot of public on the navigation at the moment, just uh, you know, taking their recreation and walking. Have there been any positive? You know, upside benefits from the lockdown period um, have you been able to do some more maintenance that would have been uh, jeopardized with the the flooding earlier in the year no i think we we've been able to do uh some maintenance work but we have been restricted because again the staff have got the social distancing problems uh several have actually been taking some leave as well um, but we're now getting into, you know, we've had the grass cutting season, we're now becoming into weed cutting. Uh, some of those are jobs that uh, they can 
uh, achieve their social distancing, although things like towpath cutting have been virtually impossible because of the number of uh, public on the footpaths. You've got to get out there really early in the morning. Yes, it's, uh, it's quite a challenge when so many other places are being restricted. The, the towpaths have uh, uh, borne the brunt and, and, and actually picked up the slack. And that's been quite trying. I was on a call with uh, Richard Perry from the Canal and River Trust today and uh, uh, and also the uh, Chief Exec of the Broads Authority and we were comparing notes about uh, the different challenges that there have been. So uh, mm. I certainly uh, sympathise and uh, uh, with, with you on, on, on that. Um, there was a question that's come through about uh, water, sh water supply. Um, are there any challenges for the navigation in terms of uh, water supply, uh, particularly during drought periods? We've been pretty fortunate, I think, in the, the time we've been operating. I mean, we've just had a very dry period, but uh, not a lot of boat use uh, because of the COVID. Mm. Um, we generally seem to be able to hold up fairly well. Uh, we haven't had to restrict navigation. Um, mm. We've got a very big catchment area. Uh, which goes way beyond the other side of Chelmsford and we do seem to still have fortunately plenty of water. What we are finding though we that the, the water is coming downstream much quicker when we do have flood conditions yeah. and you know it can we may have an area here where we have no rain but because of the wider catchment area we'll suddenly get you know a flood of water or high levels come down unexpectedly even though EA do monitor it and uh, we, we can actually check on that. Yeah, I was going to touch on that because obviously, as as with every waterway uh, authority, and there's quite a lot of other organisations and authorities and entities around the uh, waterway that you have to deal with day day in day out. And obviously, being uh, where you are, the environment agency uh, with. Uh, river and uh, coastal and, and flooding responsibilities, uh, th there must be quite a tight relationship and arrangement with them. Yes, I mean, we, we've got three local authorities along the navigation. It, it is designated main river by the environment agency, so we do need their consent to do certain things. Uh, things like dredging, etc. we have to get exemptions for. Um, yeah, th there is quite a lot of uh, behind the scenes work that has to go on by, by the, the uh, navigation manager that I think people don't realise. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not just, uh, we can't just do as we like. Uh, we have permissions to, to actually uh, put in place and uh, obviously all the red tape that goes with it. Mm. Um, you mentioned uh, that you're providing a a linear park and then that there are a lot of other associated parks that are quite nearby. What are the relationships and collaborations like with those uh, other organisations? Is there a good spirit of collaboration? Yes, yeah, we, we find generally uh, not only the local authorities but uh, the adjoining landowners are all very cooperative and helpful. Um, you know, for access to things like dredging, maintenance, we, we do often have to rely on going over a farmer's field and mm. uh, so relationships have to remain good. Uh, I mean, the two main authorities, Malden and Chelmsford, mm. uh, are both enthusiastic. Um, Chelmsford have set up recently a working group to look at the waterways in Chelmsford, uh, of which we're part of that. That is very promising. Um, Molden, well, we have been talking to them about potential schemes um, and uh, also making sure we look at opportunities through any of their planning briefs or local plans where, you know, there's likely to be redevelopment that the navigation does feature in it. When you're working with, with, with the likes of Chelmsford, uh, how, how likely is it, do you think, that we will actually see uh, the canal and river connections being made there. Is there more that IWA could do? Is there more that uh, by working with other authorities, we could really see this uh, come to fruition? You mentioned uh, the head office team being able to access grants and so on. 
is there a is there a big scheme that we can really be looking at to uh, you know, persuade this and get this over the line? Um, because it looks like it could be phenomenal. You just have to look at the basin there and see the, the development that has gone on around it. That just wouldn't have been there if if the uh, the, the benefits of the waterway hadn't hadn't been realised. No, there, there, there is a great opportunity here. We are going to be looking to IWA to see if we can find funds, grant funding to help uh, pay for that link, uh, mm. whether it's a lock or, or a cut. Um, I think the council are going to be very reliant upon finding some additional funds to do that work, particularly after recent events. Mm. Um, and as for development in that area, I mean, I think there's currently a scheme at Chelmer Ward side on that gas works land uh, for something like 420, 430 flats that are being built at the moment. Mm. Uh, and there's more potential, more vacant sites beside the navigation there uh, that the local authority are bringing forward in there. A new local plan which has just been adopted these last few weeks. And if you were able to achieve uh, uh, an, an open link through into to, to that area, how much extra length of navigation uh, would be opened up? Well by getting into the city centre initially you're probably not talking about a great deal until some bridges are lifted but mm. the, the first ones are not too difficult to do. I think after that, on the can in particular, you're, you're probably opening up, you know, a mile or more uh, up towards Admiral's Park, which could be accessible for smaller boats Excellent. and a shorter distance on the can. Yeah. Sorry, the other way around, a longer distance on the can, shorter distance on the Chelmer. <laughs> right, that makes it, yeah, I understand that. Um, so really interesting uh, questions come through about the possibility of having a, a Trailboat festival on on the river, um, whether formal or informal. Um, obviously, we've got our uh, IWA uh, trailboat uh, festival has had to be postponed this year. We're fortunate that we uh, have uh, moved it, and I, I do treat it as a postponement because we've moved it from uh, Way and Aaron this year to Way and Aaron on the first uh, May Bank holiday uh, weekend next year. And we're in the uh, privileged and uh, perhaps challenging uh, position to have two uh, trailboat festivals next year and that they, we're having another at the end of May in Chesterfield. So would, would it be a possibility of having an IWA trailboat festival uh, on the navigation? We have had one in the past, which was very successful. Uh, I forget what year it was, but quite some years ago now. Um, it's something we've thought about regularly and it would be really nice to do if, uh, I think my own thoughts were, if we're able to achieve, say, something at Sanford Marina, Sanford Mill, that would be an ideal opportunity, I think, to, to start to doing, uh, you know, another trailboat rally. Um, if we had a real purpose for doing it, it would be good. So well, you've got a couple of years to prepare. You've got a couple of years to prepare for it because we've got 2021 covered. So uh, yeah. I look forward to seeing the uh, the proposals coming through, and we'll see uh, see see what we can do to support that. That would be uh, that, that would be great. And so, are there um, many locations to uh, to put a boat uh, into the navigation on a slipway? No, that, that that's one of our problems. We've only got just one small slipway at uh, Paper Mill Lock. Uh, we do have facilities on the development side at Chelmer Water side to crane in, um, but that is another thing that's on our wish list that with, uh, say, a new offline development such as a marina, we would want to put in a proper slipway hoist facilities because we are very restricted at the moment. Our crane operation will, will not lift wide beams, only narrow boats. Um, wide beams are tending to come in via the estuary at the moment rather than be craned in. So we are lacking facilities for, for bringing boats in and certainly we'd like to improve on that. Excellent. Um, just looking at some of my other questions here as well. Um, how likely do you think that the marina option is, is likely to be? I think uh, I'm much more hopeful now than I have been over the last uh, sort of 
probably 15 years. Uh, with the change of administration at the council, they are very keen now to make progress at Sanford Mill. The fact that the new local plan is approving quite a big housing area nearby in a country park gives the incentive to actually look in detail at, at Sanford Mill becoming a honeypot related to that. Mm -hmm. So I am much more hopeful. We are also uh, talking to a neighbour down the Haybridge Bealey end uh, about a, a country park uh, development there with potential mooring facilities as well. So we're, we're looking at potential uh, as and when we can so that uh, you know we can uh, provide parking, mooring facilities, more visitor attractions, visitor centre, the facilities that we're really lacking at the moment. Well I think certainly that uh, since Covid has probably put paid to foreign holidays for a, a little while now that then there's going to be more pressure on uh, domestic uh, tourist and leisure facilities so uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be funding available to start making some of these plans come uh, to fruition uh, earlier than they, they perhaps might have been because I'm sure that the, the market if we look at it that way is definitely going to be there. What sort of capacity is there uh, across the waterway? It, it looks pretty busy in terms of moorings. You've said it would be good to uh, to have more uh, more uh, offline moorings, but just for boating in general, what sort of capacity is there? Does it does it get particularly congested, or is it because you're at relatively isolated uh, that kind of the boats that are there? Uh, um, are the, the capacity and you're not going to get too many visiting boats in or have I just completely missed the fact that there are a lot of visiting boats? We, we, we've got I think nearly 300 boats moored on the navigation mm -hmm. but uh, you know even busy weekends you do not see a lot of traffic moving. Mm -hmm. um, you, you'll see a, you know a few boats out perhaps what club at Sanford out on mass but other than that there's not a great deal of boats actually moving and uh, they are quite often just you know cruising up to the next lock and back so i think uh, we don't really see a problem at the moment with you know more boats coming onto the navigation uh, an awful lot of them are just used for the afternoon trip or uh, you know people just visiting for a picnic uh, using as a base somewhere to get away from home yeah yeah um, a couple of fairly similar questions that are looking at uh, leisure use and possibility of offering hire boats either for a week or part week or even day, day boat uh, mm. rental. Any prospects of that? Um, because I, I certainly think that <laughs> certainly in my meeting with the minister uh, at DEFRA tomorrow, we'll be making a very, very strong plea that uh, boating starts to uh, move into a more normal period from the 4th of July alongside uh, the uh, lifting of lockdown for the, the wider bed and breakfast and, and, and tourist trade. Um, so we're seeing some waterways already starting to prepare for higher boat and certainly day boats uh, are already operating on some waterways already. But is that a prospect uh, on Chalmer and Blackwater? Well, we don't, uh, there have been um, hire boats on the navigation previously and there's been, I think I can recall, three or four different mm. uh, people tried operating them, uh, but they've all actually given up. And I think the main reason for that is that we are quite a, a short navigation, isolated yeah. from the main system, and therefore it's only suitable for, you know, uh, two or three days, long weekend, etc. And uh, the operators have found that um, by the time they've explained how to use a lock uh, and we refill ours after use, not like the national system, uh, that uh, by the time the, they've done that and the boat gets to the next lock, they've forgotten how to do it. So they call them out or else get into a problem. But what we are doing is we have got Albert available for people to hire. Uh, you know, for, for day trips out, or sorry, two hours upwards, any length of period for up to 12 people. So we are making, you know, a day boat available uh, for anybody who wants that sort of trip. Very good. Well, um, I'm, I'm certainly hoping that 
that opportunity will be there for maybe uh, a, a trip. Uh, I, as many people know, I'm a, a hire boater. I don't have my own boat, so I'm always looking for interesting hiring opportunities. So uh, anybody with a boat uh, uh, on the navigation would like to hire it, I'd be uh, very happy to look at that as an option. Um, we'll be pleased to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Pleased to see oh, you again. <laughs> good. Be delighted to be to be back um, to be back down there. Um, how many staff are employed uh, and what are the, the various roles uh, on, on the staff team? Right. We, we have uh, a full time navigation manager. Uh, we have a full time lock keeper at Avery Basin. We have three lengthsmen who do our maintenance work. And we also now have a, a boat manager as well, who skippers Victoria. Um, that's generally our, our, our full-time staff. Uh, part-time administration assistant at Paper Mill Sarah, and we've got part-time cleaners, uh, and then we have uh, part-time residential caretakers, two at each of our sites uh, along the navigation, and we use you know part-time um, staff to do the trip boat operation catering because we, we do our own catering on Victoria. Uh, that sort of thing during the summer. So over the last year, our, our number of part timers has built up. Uh, but a lot of those are zero hours, you know, as and when the demand is there. So in terms of the the board and the senior management team, uh, and, and and particularly the, particularly the board, I've got a question coming in in terms of succession planning. Uh, I know currently uh, within IWA we're uh, part way through the selection process for new trustees uh, and I know uh, certainly how challenging it can be uh, to find good skilled people to take on some of these really quite responsible jobs. Uh, how, how, does that, uh, how does that work out within uh, Essex Waterways and uh, are you fully, if you've got a full complement of board members and, uh, and, and got the right skills to do everything that you're planning to do? Yes, I think think with uh, board members, we, we, we've been very lucky. I mean, we have board members, really, that we've appointed because of their, their skill sets, uh, their, their knowledge um, and background. And uh, that has worked well. Um, I, I think succession planning is always difficult. Uh, I'm not sure we, we've got totally on top of that at the moment, but... Uh, you know, I think that's something we need to continue to look at because quite a few of us are, are getting old and when you're told you've got to stay at home because you're at a certain age, it, it makes you realise. <laughs> yes, it's certainly a challenge and it's a, it, I think if there's been one good thing that's come out of this is that it's, it's making us all think about how we might do things differently and, and where the risk elements are and, and uh, certainly as you say, um, right across IWA, Essex Waterways, and, and frankly, right across the waterway scene in, in, in many in many regards, uh, then th there is a, a more elderly uh, group of activists. And I would like to see that change. I want to make sure that we encourage more uh, younger folk getting involved. Uh, we're delighted that in, in parts of the organisation, like the Waterway Recovery Group, we've got a really good mix uh, of, of ages. Uh, so I think uh, we know how to do it, so we just uh, need to look at how we extend that right throughout the, uh, the organisation as, as a whole. Um, we've had a few uh, great comments coming through on the, the Q&A screen as well, uh, just commenting about the impressive amount of restoration, uh, the management and uh, really moving things on at the pace that uh, uh, Essex Waterways has done over the last 15 years. Um, it, it really does look great. The, <clears throat> the facilities block that you showed, um, the, the, the various different things are really quite impressive, particularly when you compare them to some of the other waterways that uh, uh, I, I've seen. Uh, so it really does look like there is a good investment uh, going on there. Um, so we're just rounding up almost at 8.30. Um, so I think we've uh, dealt with most of the questions and, and comments that we've had. So uh, 
Roy, just in the last minute, any, any final thoughts from you? Anything that you'd like to say to encourage the, uh, the folks that are on, on the call and perhaps those that will be looking up, uh, at this recorded, uh, recorded uh, later on YouTube? Well, I think one of the, the things I would always mention is we are always uh, pleased to have help and interest. So if we've got anybody who wants to volunteer, whether it's just, you know, general uh, work along the navigation, maintenance improvements, or crewing our boats uh, as a volunteer, then we would really welcome you. So please do get in touch. Uh, please come and enjoy our waterway and uh, present it to other people as well. Great. Well, look, thank you so much for your presentation tonight. I would echo your words. It's a wonderful, wonderful waterway. There are very fine views. There's a, there's a wonderful sunset at Haybridge Basin tonight. Uh, you can see it here behind me. Um, I've, I've seen some great views over the, the, the coast and, and uh, right along uh, the navigation. So I, I would echo your words and encourage as many folks to get along uh, to visit and in whatever way to support the work that we're doing there. So Roy, thank you very much indeed. To everyone who's joined us tonight, thank you for uh, spending your evening with us. And we hope that we'll see you again on our Waterways webinar very soon.